Welcome to Bets on the Future, where we highlight the various career paths in the electrifying metals world. From the vehicle you ride in to the bridge holding it up, metals are everywhere. Why not in your career too? I'm Jennifer Betts, a metals industry veteran with almost 20 years experience, here to highlight these incredible career paths as told by the women who are living them. Today, we have the incredible honor to have Brandy Harlow, CEO of South Post Oak Recycling Center on Bets on the Future. Brandy is an award-winning entrepreneur, business owner, notable keynote speaker, mentor, recycling champion, and world changer. She is the CEO and second generation owner of South Post Oak Recycling Center, Houston's trusted metal recycling company. Prior to transitioning into the family's recycling business in 2013, Brandy spent 15 years leading teams within Fortune 100 companies such as Target, Northrop Gunman, and Disney in the areas of organizational development and strategy. She's blended an MS in psychology, an MBA, learnings from the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, as well as certificates in managing the family office and leadership and family transitions to continue rounding out her experience. Recognized for her entrepreneurial excellence with awards like the 2023 Texas Small Business Person of the Year, Brandy is also a celebrated keynote speaker on topics ranging from resilience to women empowerment. A champion of STEM, education, and sustainability, she serves in influential roles on boards like the Pepperdine School of Business and the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. Residing in Houston with her husband, Brandy balances her professional achievements with a passion for travel, hiking, and spending time with loved ones. I'm actually in person with yeah. Brandy Harlow. Um, we are at South Coast Oak Recycling Center here in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I am in the area for AWMI event. You're heavily involved in AWMI and women recycling and things like that. And it only seems natural. I've known you for several years mm -hmm. now, but I've never actually gotten to see your the company. company. Yeah. Yes. So I just wanted to thank you for coming on and taking a few minutes just to chat with me. I'm glad you are here. And you are absolutely right. I think we've met in most other cities except for here. Almost well, every other state except for here. Yeah, except for here. So welcome. Welcome. Welcome <laughs> to South Post Oak Recycling Center. This is my family. It is my home. It is what I work on every day to build a legacy. You know, I, I think a lot of people talk just about metals mm -hmm. um, and I love them. Um, but this is so much bigger to me. You know, it is about this industry, but um, it's also about impact for me. It's about um, growing this business, you know, making a difference here, um, but then using, if you will, the successes and the tentacles and even the profits, if you will, mm -hmm. from this to parlay that into other things. Um, and, and it's not just because you know, environmental, social, and governance is, if you will, the hot topic right now. Um, it's very in. It yes. is very in. It is very in. But we'll be celebrating 30 years in business this year. And Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I know it's that's infantile comparatively, but I've learned in life to run my own race, mm -hmm. you know, and so we're going to be proud of, of what we've done. But I just think back to when I joined the company about 10 years ago when I came in and I was dissecting financials and I spent a lot of time asking my dad why things were a certain way or what was his thought, you know, not to challenge it. And I just remember um, giving back to the community quite substantially and nobody knew about it, you know, except for the people that we gave back to. And I said, these are great endeavors, but I think people should know. And I think, um, and then there's a lot that people shouldn't know, but I, I learned right away that that was just the fabric and also a tentacle of doing business. Um, so here we are. It, it's a really incredible story mm -hmm. from what I know about your, your family starting the business to also you did your own thing yeah. for, for many years. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I now live in California and you were, you have some ties out there as well. You were recently out there at your home mater as well. So it's, can you share a little bit about your journey? Because you obviously have the family ties, but it doesn't seem like maybe you were always going to come back to the business. I, I wasn't, I wasn't Jennifer. And so um, I guess the abbreviated version would be, you know, I, um, my parents started South Coast Oak Recycling Center in 1994. Believe it or not, I was one of uh, their first employees, and my job at that time was upgrading materials, specifically AC coils and reapers. 
um, and, and moving it to a more profitable form. Um, but no, I went to college. I, I went to the University of Houston here in Houston. Um, and then I moved to California to go to grad school. And the, the short of it was I was very focused on pursuing a career in organizational development, talent, and strategy. Um, and that's what I did. You know, I finished grad school there and I had my eyes set on what I thought would be a sexy career. And so I said, I was like, I want to work for the Walt Disney Company. Well, that's not where my career started. It actually started at Northrop Grumman in aerospace. So uh, I, I spent a few years there um, working for the division that built the B-2 bombers. Wow. Um, yeah, so go from Mixie, no, Mickey, <laughs> Mixie, <laughs> Mickey to, you know, B-2 bombers. But that is where I cut my teeth, I think, professionally. And um, that, too, was a, it was a male-dominated industry. Um, it was, it aged more mature, if you yeah. will. Yes. Um, but I had great leaders there. I had great mentors. And so I spent a few years there, you know, building out talent management pipelines, working with executives on their strategies and loved it. Uh, while there, I got a call from the Walt Disney Company. Of course, there was networking that was taking place in between. You networking? Yeah, no. exactly. Go figure. <laughs> no, I don't figure. Yes. You don't sit tight. You know, I'm a big believer in being excellent where I am, but then also looking at other tentacles, as yes. I'm sure you are. Yes. And so, yeah, I got a call with, with Disney and went over to the Consumer Products Division um, to lead and to work in the organizational development and talent strategy. Fast forward, just like careers work, my boss ended up leaving. I ended up um, taking over my division's department of leadership and talent management and strategy. And that was instrumental because what that really consisted of was me working directly with the president's um, in the C-suite of that division uh, as their internal consultant, you know, wow. as their internal consultant. And it wasn't it wasn't HR per se. This I wasn't hiring and firing. You know, my job was to facilitate their strategy sessions and figure out which structure they needed in place in order to align with the growth strategies that they had. How do we assess the people, et cetera? And so I always laugh because when people say, well, do those skills transfer over? I'm like, <laughs> that is business. Business is, yes. we all know it, the, the business is about the people, you know, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. I hear people who say, man, I wish I could run a business without the people. I, I say, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Um, exactly. No, that's huge. Like, uh, yeah. that's a huge, like, uh, yeah. for, for anything that yeah. you would have wanted to go into yeah. to have that experience. You know, the people piece is huge. I mean, and, and if you talk to folks today, it's one of the biggest pain points that we have is the attraction, the engagement, the retention of, and I really do think my experience, and not that we don't have our share of challenges for sure, but I do think that it gave me a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and then coupled with that, I wasn't just focusing on that. It was very much about business transformation. It was about business growth. Um, and so, you know, backing up to my time when I was at Northrop Grumman, I remember being, and you can appreciate this, driving on the 405 freeway, about to pull my hair out in Los Angeles traffic. But I used that time, I talked with my, my dad quite often. So I would talk to him about business and so forth. And I just, I remember him saying, you know, 2008, 2010, hey, Brandy, at some point, I'm going to want to sell this. At some, and, and like the person or like the, the child that does not think about that, you know, I said, go right ahead, you know, go right ahead and sell it. And um, I had no interest in coming into this industry. Really? Not at all. You know, I, you know, some people just have their own, you, you have your own career that you have in mind. And I'm sure there's pe many people who are probably watching and they have kids or they know people have set out and they're like, I'm going to do this and this is how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the family business or the recycling industry. Yep. Um, you can probably can very much relate to it. Yeah. I have a finance degree. I shouldn't be here. Exactly. Exactly. And so you and then you find that path, but um, I'll kind of bring it together by saying, you know, oftentimes there's people in our lives that will water seeds that were planted, and and then you just watch it grow. So fast forward, I'm still working at uh, Disney. I'm I'm leading the organizational development team, and one of the executive coaches that we were working with, Peter, pulled me aside one day after he had an engagement. 
And I've, I've shared this story before. And he just said, Brandy, I think you're doing a great job here. But I really think that there's something more for you. And I looked at him like, I'm at my dream job <laughs> doing exactly what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, you've told me about this family business in Houston. And I looked at him and I said, the scrap metal business? <laughs> I said, you have to be joking. Anyway, it was Peter that painted this picture. I mean, painted this picture and watered this seed. He he essentially said, so this would have been in 2010. He said, Brandy, first of all, I think recycling is the way of the future. Go yep. figure. It's yep. 2023 now. He yep. said, recycling is the way of the future. Now we're having conversations about circularity and the integration of recycling and sustainability. He said, you know, there's not many people that successfully transition a family business from the first to the second, you know, or the second to the third. Yes. And then he said, if I can be quite frank, he said, I don't see many people who look like you that are in that industry and that are in that space. And Mm -hmm. so he, he just he painted a picture so clear that it made me really take a step back and say, you know what? what do I want to do next? You know, and I knew I would never catch up with the years of experience that my dad had, you know, and for me, it's 15 15 years in corporate America. So not that degrees are the end all be all, but I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to school. And so that's where Pepperdine comes in. (laughs) I go back to school, I get an MBA, and I'm going to use that season of life to do my pre-work on the business, on the industry. And, you know, I'm I'm sure you know several people who've gone through to get their MBAs and they're studying companies they have nothing that they're just interested in, Coca-Cola or Walmart or Apple, you know. And for me, over those two years going to night school while I worked full time, I studied South Coast Oak Recycling Center. So from from queuing to our profit and loss statements, to our cash flow statements, to our CapEx, you know, to understanding the supply chain of this industry, I was, I did that in parallel. And so that was my pre-work, wow. you know, coming into the industry, um, finished up grad school in mm-hmm. December of 2012. I put in my letter of resignation, uh, January, 2013 at the Walt Disney company. Wow. I did a month sabbatical in Europe and I, I didn't know, don't you, you have to Italy and France. You can't go wrong. No, just Eat your way through it. It's just it's amazing. Oh. a little bit here and there. Yeah. Um, some good pasta and wine that goes yes. a long way. Yes. It definitely goes a long way. And then I was here in March of 2013. Wow. So Judy, I gotta give Judy Ferraro a shout out because Judy said, Randy, you literally went from pixie dust to real dust. <laughs> and and I did. Yes. Jen, and I have not, I have honestly not looked back. It, I have not looked back. It's been really wonderful to, to see you in this industry. Mm-hmm. I have to give a couple shout outs mm-hmm. to, to your, what you've been doing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, for those listening, for those watching, find you online, find you on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, you were at the white house recently. Yeah. You were, you gave a speech at Pepperdine. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's been a year. Yes. It's been a, it's been a really good year. It's funny you said that because I woke up this morning and I was already thinking about Thanksgiving because this is, that's right around the point. For mm-hmm. those of you who are watching our list, this, we're at the end of October. Yes. Spoiler alert. We're in 2023. <laughs> um, but we're at the end of October and that's my brain thinks like future focus, like what's coming up? What do we, and so in my head, I was already thinking about the things that I'm thankful for and the yes. things that I'm grateful for, just kind of mentally reflecting on this year and like I said, there has been some extreme highlights, you know, and I'm a big believer, you know, accolades, they are nice, you know, but if if we're quite candid, you know, it's, it's really linked to ongoing brand visibility, business visibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those things, I don't, I don't, they're nice. They're nice to have, you know, but I much prefer to keep growing the business, you yes. know, growing my team. But yeah, so the small business administration, they have an award every year. And they have multiple awards that they do for every state. And one of those awards is the Small Business Entrepreneur of the Year. And so um, I was nominated by the local SBDC or the Small Business Development Center office. They put my, my name in the hat. I filled out the paperwork that they asked. Fast forward, I get a call from the district's leader in, in Houston. And he says, Brandy, I have some good news. And I said, what is that, Jeff? Our Tim, and he says, you have been selected as the Houston, you know, small business entrepreneur of the year. And I said, this is great. 
He said, well, I have some more news. And I said, well, what is that? And he said, well, what you didn't know was that your name was also put in the hat of these seven other Texas district winners. Um, so, and he said, so this was over a thousand people. They were reviewed, they narrowed down, and then you were selected this year. So that was a huge honor, right? Huge honor. It's huge. It, 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 Santa Texas isn't, isn't exactly it's small. Not it's small. not small. <laughs> it's not a snow. It's at this, uh, yeah, <laughs> not at all. It, it takes me 12 hours to drive from Houston to El Paso, just FYI. Mm -hmm. And we're yep. not even out of the state. Yep. Um, but I thought that that was a huge honor. And so they said, yes. you're going to be going to Washington, D.C. They're going to have some awards. Great. We're on our way to Washington, D.C. We're landing at um, DCA. And like all of us, I'm checking my email because it's like you got to yep. keep working while you're moving. Yep. And I see this email that says complete your security clearance for the White House. And I was like, this has to be a joke. Fast forward, it was not a joke. It was quite serious. And um, I tell people, I don't care what your political beliefs are. It is quite special yeah. to go um, to the White House. And even still, we thought, oh, we'll just meet with the chief of staff. But no, President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris were there. And they're focused. And it was an intimate group. It was probably about 60 people. I, I call that intimate. Uh, I would say it's pretty intimate. <laughs> the White House. As a, as a, we're in the rose dark and their focus was on the state of business and the power of entrepreneurship. And so it was, it was just quite special and quite surreal. That was, you know, you, you I'm sure have your list of things that you want to get oh, done. Yes. 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 And we, I mean, we do. That's why not. <laughs> And that was not on the list, I have to tell you. And so it's nice, nice when you have those. Yeah, it is nice when you have those cherries. It is so nice. So it was, it's just an honor. And then you get to be there and you meet the 50 other, you know, winners from across. And that becomes a new network of people. So it was and, awesome. And probably pretty inspirational, too, to look up so. what they've done as well. And like you said, from the networking standpoint, yeah. I imagine it probably motivated you a little bit more. It does. You know, but and I have to tell you, I feel like, through that throughout this year, but it's been going like this for a little while. I call it juice. I even even with the setbacks, you know, and the falls, you know, and the you know climbs back up. There is so much upside, and I would. There's a book called Peaks and Valleys, and the premise of it is enjoy your peaks while you're in, on your peaks. You know, and don't get too high, if you will, but enjoy your peaks. Yeah. But recognize that there will be valleys, and yep. learn how to adapt when you're in your valleys. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this year I have had some beautiful peaks, you know, and it makes me. And then I appreciate my valleys different I look at my valleys quite differently you know if if we didn't have a month that I anticipated us having I go get some juice you know I'm juiced up and it's yep. like okay let's hey team let's let's go get it so you know it's it's a blessing I'm gonna have to add that to the um uh, I'm gonna say the reading list even though we typically listen to audible are you an yes. audible I'm yes. gonna take audible yeah I mean when you're driving in the car like, it's awesome it, it's fantastic it's perfect it, it really is it you've done so many incredible things and and you're one of the few people I would say in our industry that actually posts about it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that about you. And you do it in a way of of sharing what's going on in your business, mm -hmm, of sharing, mm -hmm. you know, the peaks as you talk yeah. about, right? I think you do also do a good job of the val sharing yeah. the valleys as yeah. well. It's it's both sides. Yeah. And I think that motivates people and encourages people to stay in our industry, yeah. uh, network within our industry, mm -hmm. and also join our industry. Right. I can't imagine out of the other 49 states or 50 more yeah. living um, DC that a lot of them were in the recycling industry. <laughs> There was nobody in the recycling industry. Right? No, there wasn't. There, there wasn't. And you know, I have to tell you, I couldn't take this is... What we're doing now, I think, is is a team effort. Um, believe it or not, it is not my comfortable space to come and say, this is what we're doing on a social platform. I might be out at dinner with folks. I might be talking to a customer. Um, I would say kind of I, I appreciate kind of intimate conversations with people. And that might be the platform that I say, this is who we are as an industry. These are some of the things that we do, you know, as a company. Here's some value that we can offer you. Um, but for several years now, I have been pushed by my network um, and even my internal team to say, put it out there, yes. you know, put it out there. and. Um, even still, you know, 
what I have realized, Jennifer, is that people do look and people people do say, here's what's going on or what's going on. I, I can't tell you how many prospective customers that I've had or even people in my network who have gotten a better understanding of the industry, of our business, and even the value that we bring because of social media. Mm -hmm. And we're not across all platforms. You know, we have Mm -hmm. hyper-focused, but that's been strategic on our part. And I think you've done a phenomenal job in that ramping up and ramping up very quickly. Um, But you can speak to it probably um, very, very intellectually and say, it's, I think it can be a game changer. It, it really can be. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've met you through through ISRI, mm-hmm. um, which is the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. Yeah. Um, we got to see a lot of things. I got, we're, I know, like we got to pause for a second while yeah. all the industry talk because uh-huh. I hope this reaches people that are not within our industry. Very much so. Very much so. Um, but at that point, I mean, I wasn't really on social media. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have probably really met you or come across mm-hmm. you up until that point except for like the in-person right right right, right. it really seems like in recent years mm-hmm. more businesses are getting online more people are getting online yes. and so now especially with covid yes everything shutting down and not being able to network at conferences it changes the game it changed the game and you're really seeing the reward mm-hmm. for all the hard work that you're putting mm-hmm. into the online content yes. showing what you're doing yes i mean i've never been to your facility mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. but it's an exact representation of what you've been putting out mm-hmm, on, mm-hmm. on, you know, especially yeah. like LinkedIn on the various platforms. Yes. So it's been wonderful to see that in person. Yeah. What you're putting out there is authentic. That's I think the best key. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't get on these platforms any other way. You know, it's like I said, it's not necessarily the most comfortable because believe it or not, I I'm not necessarily somebody that says, let's put me out there. And I and I go back and forth with my marketing team, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, I, and I go back and forth. Um, but they were like, Brandy, it's you got you got to, you know, it's where we are in yes. today's marketplace. Yes. Um, people want to, well, people have always wanted to do people do business with people they know, like, and yes. trust, right? Mm-hmm. But what's interesting is that we're in a landscape now where people may not personally know you, but seeing an authentic you, and I always try to present an authentic me, um, it's almost like a, a precursor to meeting them. And you know, I'll meet people yes. and they're like, I feel like I know you. Yes. <laughs> It kind of takes a little bit of the legwork out yes. when you first initially meet someone. You have to get through the a little bit of the awkwardness, yes. the small talk, etc. I've met people in person yes. recently yeah. that it kind of dawned on me that I had never actually met them in person, mm-hmm. but I felt like I had known them yeah. because of what they've been putting out on um, various social media platforms, yeah. and it's just it it made it easier and quicker to do business with them. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it bridges. Um, I also think about it from educating about the industry and educating about our business. So I think um, by putting out content, showing people what value is, what they get out of something, um, linking it back to their pain point, it also speeds up a cycle of connecting with people. You know, I've gone into corporate doors um, of people who follow and they're like, okay, I, already, I get it, you know, I, I get it. Let's let's get the ball rolling. And so it's a tangible benefit. It, it really is the social media aspect of things yeah. um, really makes it easier to do business with people it does. or to even find talent, to be honest, yes. because when you're thinking about hiring someone, uh, what are they going to do? Yes. They're going to Google you. They're yes. going to go to social media. They're going to see what is your company about? What what do you offer? Yes. And when they go through the interview process and then ultimately onboarding, is it going to be matching up with what you're putting out there? It is so real. It is so real. I've actually, so practically speaking, I, I've had a good couple handful of people who have reached out to me directly um, about employment because they either seen or read um, about who we are, what we're doing. And they literally have said, you know, Brandy, I want to work for a leader like you. And so then their job is just to make sure that there's continuity, right? Like you said. And so we've hired a couple of people That's really cool. um, through those channels. And, and that was not mind that is just a byproduct you know it's a byproduct of uh what we're doing you know what do they call it a tertiary benefit that was not even at the forefront Mm -hmm. you know and so you're spot on yes it's a lot of benefit there there really is a lot of benefit when it comes to 
to, I mean, that's why we're doing the podcast currently, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because I'm going to um, have our production team yeah. chop it up yeah. and put it out onto the various channels because yeah. I hope it reaches right. other people in our industry because yeah. it's a full supply chain. Some people at the OEMs have yeah. no idea what's happening on the recycled material yeah. side of things and vice versa. And so I do hope things like this help educate, help bring in the next generation, help, you know, also from a very public policy mm-hmm, perspective, mm-hmm. Um, let our legislators in on a little bit more what we can actually do. Yeah. Right. No, I think it's positive. There, so if we can get more voices out there, you know, I, I'm very much on your um, team side. If we can get more brandy out there, yeah. um, that would be great because then, you know, it, it's a delicate balance. It really is. Where if I, I mean, I'm t- to be quite frank, some of it. I mean, I, it, I never want to tip to the narcissism side, you know. And so, I think the way around that, and what we really try to do is, even if I'm out there, link it back to what really, what really matters, you know. Yes. So it's linking it back to what the team is doing over here, linking it back to the impact of the recycling industry of what we're doing in the metal space, Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of, and so I think a lot of things, brands have faces, if you will. Um, And so I've wrapped my head around that. And the goal is just to link it back to things that people can learn from, they would value, they would be mm-hmm. educated about, and honestly, continue to bring visibility mm-hmm. to, to South Coast Oak and the industry as a whole. It does make the legislative conversations easier. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes customer conversations easier. It makes community conversations easier um, because people already have a point of reference. Yes. With something that they connect with, like we've talked about. Yes. If somebody was looking to get into the industry, do you have any recommendation, any suggestions, anything along those lines before we wrap up? Yeah. You know, I think we've talked about it. I think that there are so many different paths into this industry. Uh, And I'll speak briefly. One of the committees that I'm serving on through the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industry um, by the way, I will tell you, from 10 years ago or 10, 10 and a half years ago when I came into the industry, um, one of the, the words of wisdom that my dad said was, you you got to get involved in our trade association. Um, that is where you're going to learn. That's where you're going to connect with people that you need to. And that's where you're going to have access to resources. Mm-hmm. So by, back to access to resources, I co-chair a workforce development committee. And it's it's still something that I think more members and people can take advantage of. But uh, what we're talking about is how do you recruit people from, I call them different ponds, but different talent pools that you wouldn't normally recruit from. You mentioned you coming out of finance. I think people who study finance are not necessarily directed toward the recycling industry. You know, I kind of have a blend of psychology and business and even still, I mean, I was exposed to it because you know, from a young age. But um, I think a couple of things. I think trying to connect with people early on in their careers and exposing them to internships or entry-level jobs in this industry is a good path. Um, For us, it's working with a local university and working with different colleges, if you will, at that university, Mm -hmm. uh, whether that be the business school, you know, whether that be the architect or engineering school Mm -hmm. and trying to give them glimpses of internships. I think that that's one way to continue to expose people with various backgrounds. I think speaking to business groups, you know, um, for example, our even my my church has a um, a ministry. It's called Faith in Business. There are people that come that are transitioning um, careers, or they want to start a new business. Organizations like that are a great time to introduce people to a new industry. Hey. And, you know, I've, I've talked to someone that had operations experience in the retail space. Have you ever thought about the recycling industry? You know, I've talked to students that said, I'm interested in environmental, but never once have they thought about this industry. Come, come, come try this. I've talked to HR students or HR professionals that have thought about just about every profession except for this. Hey, why don't you come do a project for us? So I think that to answer your question, I think that there are many entry points, I think, as 
people in the industry, we have to get really creative as to where we tap, mm -hmm. but we all have a network. You know, if you didn't, you can go to the colleges that you went to. You can go to the community groups that you work within. Um, I don't have biological kids. I have a bonus son. We talk to his kids. I mean, his friends, you yes. know, we say, here are things, here's what's going on in this industry. Mm -hmm. So I think you can approach it many different ways. That's really good advice. And I would not have thought about from um, some of those non-traditional associations that have access to a lot of really wonderful businesses. They really, there. really do. And, and to kind of put a bow on it. So if for is members, one of the benefits is you can log on to the website. Uh, there's a page for talent development and workforce development. And, and we actually have recommendations there on alternative places to recruit talent, oh, how to draft job descriptions. If you're struggling with job descriptions, yep. how to create 30, 60, 90 day reviews. Cause now you're like, okay, I got this person. How do I integrate them into the industry? So there's templates on that. Um, there are resources there for people to touch base on. That's to really, check out. That's really wonderful to know. Yeah. I was not aware of that. Yes. Uh, so thank you. No problem. <laughs> We're working on, on the marketing of it. <laughs> yes. You can call me. Yes. Um, I really, really appreciate you taking the time today. Well, Just a quick pop in. Wanted to finally yeah. get to see you in action at your, your company. So. It's a pleasure, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. I, I think you're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you.